In a world that is uh, changing constantly and rapidly, uh, insurance make a very important role and uh, is changing as well. Today I have a pleasure and honor to have an international guest with us, Mr. David Howden, who is uh, visiting Greece uh, because of the rebranding of the Howden here in uh, Athens and also to see quite a few people in the insurance market. First of all, David, thank you for your time. I know your schedule is very tight and uh, for the things that you want to share with us. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Lovely to be here. So I'm reading that uh, you are leading now a company of more than 10,000 employees. You are running 1.5 billion of uh, revenues and more than 10 billion of, of premium uh, under management. How did you get to this point? <laughs> well, it's been a good journey, actually, and a fun journey. I mean, I started the business 28 years ago now. Originally, we were just three people. So, uh, But with this real clear vision that we wanted to build something that was different, that had a, had a real focus on the people in the business. And today it's amazing to see how we've grown. In fact, there's 11,500 people now in the role. But critically for me, 3,500 of those are shareholders in the group. So we have that different feeling of empowerment. And I've loved walking around the office here and seeing you know, the atmosphere and the energy there is here. And all about that, we're here to build a business, not just to be in insurance. You say that the, uh, your company is uh, people's first. How do you comment that? Yeah, so I, I think people first means, I always say to clients, you know, uh, you are not my priority. My priority is my people. Why? Because if we look after our people, I know they'll look after the clients and then the money will look after itself. So we have a group that really is about empowerment. There's a great sign up here that Mitra has got about, you know, why would we employ really intelligent people and then tell them what to do? That's nuts, isn't it? So we believe that if you actually think that people can make a difference, they feel it's theirs, maybe they own a share, and they feel able to achieve, they will do much better for the clients. And I think that's one of the things, we're a really good listening business. We've grown, during COVID, the business has more than doubled in size. There were 6,000 of us, now there's nearly 12,000 of us. Our revenues are over actually 1.5 billion pounds now. And we've achieved that phenomenal growth, why? Because we've been able to attract really talented people. Talented people with real ambition and drive who can really focus on clients want to join us. And that's, I think, what our customers experience. And that's why we're growing so fast. So here in Greece, you did one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, M&A. And uh, what do you see uh, from the Greek market? Okay, so I, I think, you know, first and foremost, what I love about uh, Matrix, which of course is now rebranding, I'm very proud to Howden, is it is really absolutely got our, our DNA. It's a business that Dimitri has built up from the ground because he's had a real focus on client needs. And I think you know, we're in very challenging times at the moment. You know, if I'm talking to my clients around the world, they've got a lot of issues on. We've just come out of the challenges of COVID and what that's had, all sorts of areas around supply chain and around, you know, in essence, a, a, a lack of, a, of being able to get people together and, and around, of course, now increasing inflation because of the money that's been spent. So we had all that going on. Now we've got the absolute atrocities happening in Ukraine and the ter beyond the terrible effects for the people themselves, there is, of course, the global effects of what that means. Again, more pressure on inflation, more pressure on supply chains, interest rates going up. So I think, you know, when you combine that with also a world that's still got to face the huge challenges of climate change, you know, how are we going to make sure we do actually maintain 1.5? We're probably not even going to make that. We're probably now already going to target below two. If we don't do that, there won't be a world in the future. So our job, I think, here in Greece is to go to businesses, companies, individuals, say, how can we help? How can we be relevant to you? What can we do to either help you live a better life, be more resilient individually, be more resilient as a business, develop a business, or even develop the country? And I, I think insurance really is a force for good. And if we listen to our clients, we can help them be more resilient in a very challenging world. So climate change and sustainability, uh, how do you comment that? What is your view on this? Uh, my, my view is the only way we're going to succeed is to invest in transition. Um, you know, I, I, ultimately, 
We've got to invest in the technology that takes us away from carbon. And the only way to do that is to support that investment. We can't be naysayers and say, shut this off or shut that off. The people that need to make the change are those that in a way are the ones that are polluting the most today. And our role as insurance broker is to support that transition. Our role as an insurance company is to provide the risk transfer to allow people to do that. We've already done that in big ways. You know, the insurance industry has had negative losses on renewable energy for years. So you could say we're actually being big supporters, but we have to work with energy companies, with, with, with shipping companies, with transport companies, logistics, to say, how do we move fast? Uh, I sit in the UK on what was called the Sustainable Markets Initiatives, where we brought together people from all industries, from insurance, from finance, private equity, shipping, logistics, to say, how do we really speed up this transition? I'm absolutely sure that insurance has a critical role to play in that. Just as we had a critical role far enough to play in the development of the revolutions, and in some ways have the Industrial Revolution, that have caused the problems we have today. So we must now be part of the solution. We must be that force for good. So you said before, we have some uh, uh, challenging uh, times uh, in our days, like the uh, pandemic, uh, the energy crisis that we have now. Uh, what do you think about the future of insurance? Is this uh, challenging? Are you having a positive uh, thoughts or what do you think in the future will happen? Well, I, I, I think that you know, in, insurance needs to make sure it's relevant. Uh, and that's about you know, doing one thing very clear, and that's listening to our clients' need. You know, originally, the risks and exposures that clients had might have been property risks, they might have been shipping risks. Now they've changed some ways, that the intangible risks are becoming much greater than the tangible risks. How can we help them sort out what's going on with supply chains? Can we bring in parametric insurances that you know, allow people to say, if my supply chains get interrupted, I can get actually a payment. I can have business interruption saved by businesses. We need to think about what really is worrying the C-suite of companies, what's worrying individuals, and can we be relevant to that? If we just keep on selling the products of the old, rather than listening with our two ears and actually coming up with solutions, then we won't be relevant. If we listen and we adapt and we change, then absolutely we'll provide the experience that our clients want to help them in the next five, 10 years, as you say, what are no doubt going to be quite challenging times. Uh, you are an expert on M&As, you've done a lot, you've grown uh, a lot. Uh, is there a stop on that or are you going to continue? No, no, no. <laughs> it, for, for, for me, you know, we've only just started, you know. <laughs> and I think there's a huge opportunity out there uh, for us for business. And I, I always say that, you know, life is always, uh, I use the term of the, you know, about the poem, the, the road to Ithaca. It's all about the journey. There isn't an ending. So uh, you started in uh, insurance uh, how many years ago? Oh my God, a long time ago, you know, 40 years ago now, 1981 I started. I was just 16 years old, so okay. uh, I'd broken my back playing rugby. My mother said, if you weren't going to carry on in uh, university, you've got to go and work. So yeah, I've been in it a long time and I'm passionate about it. I love it. I, I, it's, a, it's a wonderful industry uh, and, and I think, uh, as I said earlier, I think it's an industry that can be really supportive. Now, I, I believe uh, after all these years, many things change in the market. Do you believe uh, someone who started uh, in this business today can become another Howden in the future? Yeah, I think there's huge opportunity. I mean, I've I just even this morning been meeting you know, my colleagues here, and Dimitri has been talking about young people who have come in in junior positions, now got training, gone on to be brokers. I think it's absolutely an industry where we need to attract a really diverse, different group of people. We need the young people come here. We need diversity of thought to come into the industry. Your point you just made, how do we remain relevant? There's no way we're going to remain relevant unless we can attract in, you know, younger uh, people who want to really develop. I think those people will find huge opportunity in insurance. Because if you think about it, it's an industry where we don't deal with ourselves. We deal with other people. So we deal with individuals. We deal with you know, people in, in banking, people in, in, in construction, people in shipping, people in logistics. So there's, there's all sorts of industries, and therefore you can take your expertise. We've got people who are lawyers, accountants, engineers, you know, all different types working in the group. And we desperately need that absolute diversity uh, of thought and people to help us be relevant for our clients. 
Right, before we close, you have a positive message to give to our people? Yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think from, from, from my, my, my side, I'd say, look, we are, as Howden now, number one in the Greek market. And it's an amazing achievement. But what's really, really important is that, okay, how can we now really use that position to actually grow our business by actually being relevant to our clients in the future? And critically, as you've made, attract more and more people to come and join us on the journey. It's exciting times ahead. Right, David, thank you very much. And before we close, you allow me to give you a little gift yeah, absolutely. to remember us, <laughs> which is this little cup. <laughs> I survived the interview. Ah, thank you very much indeed. You. I enjoyed the interview. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Thank you, David.